Call this meeting to order. All the selectmen are present. We'll start with transmitting a Treasury warrants 43, 43A, 44, 44A, 45, and 45A. Motion so moved. Second. Motion made second. All in favor? It's unanimous. We have no minutes to approve, so we'll go right, go right to our 7 o'clock appointment. With Usam Hel Ombre uh, from Nea Inc. doing business as ZNS Gas Station Service uh, for the public hearing request to obtain a Class 2 garage license for property located at 603 Main Street. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Usam? Yes, sir. Did I pronounce it correctly? How are you doing tonight? I'm all right. Good. I feel I'm doing a presentation in college. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just requesting the just in just couple I don't know how many spots they will allow to put in my station for like used cars for sale in case I end up buying something from customers you know that's it okay do you have the green yes thank you okay any recommendations from well, we do have some <coughs> recommendations. And initially, um, we had not received a plot plan from the applicant um, to comply with the zoning requirements. So I, I did see that, and I asked Mr. Spaulding to contact you. And I understand you met with Mr. Spaulding, the building inspector. Yes. And he has since uh, revised his recommendation that he received the plot plan and that based upon um, where you intend to put the because. two cars if you get the license that you comply with the zoning requirements. So that's, that's okay. favorable. Uh, the uh, chief is also, Chief Bagonis has also reviewed mm -hmm. uh, the, the background and indicates that there's no reason that he would be aware to not recommend the application um, for the class two garage license. So there would be no objection from the chief um, with regard to fire uh, and I spoke with uh, the chief Bradbeer on this he indicates that due to outstanding flammable license issues the fire department does not recommend approval now I spoke with um, the chief about this recommendation and what he indicated to me is that he has been attempting to um, reach you or that they've asked the fire department particularly the deputy chief has asked you to contact them to work out uh, the license issues their technical issues with regard to the flammable license uh, it's not there's no safety issue involved but there's paperwork that needs to be oh, submitted so and I should go to him. So you should see the fire chief. Now I would I would recommend okay. that if the board sees fit and they think everything is in order and the applicant understands that the that, that the limitations of the bylaws with regard to the vehicles and where they can be placed and how you get the vehicles, that the board may wish to um, grant the license contingent upon our receiving approval from the fire chief that everything is okay, which would prevent. Um, uh, Mr. Al Habre from having to come back, but that's a that's a up to the yep. up to the board at this point, and he, he does in fact have a full repair shop that is consistent with the bylaw. Okay. Yes. Any questions or comments from the board? Just pretty much what the manager said. I think that's very fair. You know, if the board does take that action relative to what the manager stated. Okay. I'll, you know, I, I I'll contact them. I didn't know. So, yeah. if that's do I have a uh, certain time like uh, deadline? That's a good question. Well, I, I, would, I would suggest that you want to you want to do that um, as soon as possible, tomorrow. and we can't. If this is what the board does, we won't be able to release the license to you until the chief, the fire chief, is satisfied. Okay. So that's the timeline. The timing is up to you at this point. Okay, I'll yeah. I'll, con I'll try to contact them tomorrow. Okay. Any questions or comments? Oh. <clears throat> now I'll, I'll make a motion then. Um, I move that we grant the request subject to approval of the fire department and specifically ask the manager to hold the license until that approval is documented. I'll second that. Okay. Motion means, uh, sh before I take that vote, should we, uh, this is a public meeting. Should I see if there's any, any questions or comments from the public? 
Okay, seeing none, we have a motion on the floor, a motion made and seconded. All in favor? Shins. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I will not ask the, um, the board to sign these documents. We can get them to you once we have approval because they have okay. to be redated anyways to the date that, uh, that he provides us. Uh, would that would that make sense to the board that we yep. date it? have to redate it anyway. once once he we sure. get the approval. Do you understand, Mr. Obama? Oh, I'm sorry, Delambre, Do you understand that you just contact the fire department once you squared away? Contact the manager's office and we'll release the. Okay, uh, any paperwork I should bring from the chief? He'll I'm sure he'll let you know what he's looking for. Correct? Yes, yes, yeah. to the chief. If there's any problem after seeing the chief, this. And he's unclear. Come in and see me. But it should be all, all set. We'll be in room. Right in this office next oh, okay. door. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good, Good luck. luck. Good luck in business. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And our 710 appointment is with Sandra Curtin, Executive Director, WCTV, uh, regarding the 25th anniversary celebration. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for seeing me so quickly. Um, I do have um, paper to give you. Could I give this to you, Mike, and pass it along? Um, just a quick little handmade poster, which we will follow through with more prettier ones. Um, what we're seeking tonight is um, our request is to use Waltham Street for um, an anniversary event for our 25th anniversary of WCTV. As you know, WCTV uh, came into the town, uh, got three stations immediately, and started to use them. And so there have been 25 years of selectmen, school committee, um, graduations, promenades, good guys, everything that's gone on in the town, there's been 25 years of it. Uh, through WCTV, so the people will like to go to the event, but are able to sit at home and watch that event many times over if they wish. So um, we're having a little celebration. Everything is free. Um, a lot of it is geared to children, uh, and um, we're going to be in the building showing movies and outside of the building on the lawn and on the street uh, we have some little dance troops that are coming along uh, that are going to give uh, little recitals so we're looking forward to this event if it rains we're all inside if it doesn't rain we're using all our space okay um we will be, you're going to be taking questions from the board tonight. Any questions or comments? Yes, I, sure. I just have one question. I know that you, um, there was talk about upgrading the cameras in, the, in this room for all the municipal meet, uh, meetings. Can you give us maybe an update on that? And yeah, how that's everything's on? been ordered. Oh. Uh, we had a final meeting with uh, Mr. Kyra, and uh, we've ordered all the equipment. And as soon as it's in, the people we ordered the equipment from will be doing the installation. So, uh, as a matter of fact, on the 21st, we're going to start talking to um, the people developing the high school and see what we can add into the media room so that they make the media room easy to use. And hopefully students will start using that media room and do some of the meetings or some of the events at the high school. Outstanding. Any questions or comments from the board? Uh, if I may, just yeah, briefly on the 25th anniversary celebration, um, 25 years, congratulations. I guess I don't want to uh, take away from being able to say all these nice things to you on the 25th, on the actual 25th. But, um, <laughs> well, that's okay. We can hear them twice. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a heck of a thing. Congratulations. I'm looking forward to, uh, to being there, and uh, I wish you great success, and I hope people from the town will come and show up and, uh, and help you celebrate. So I'll be, it's my, it'll be my uh, pleasure to vote in favor of this. Once again, also just to say thank you uh, for being here tonight and also congratulations on 25 years. Uh, you and the entire uh, studio do a fantastic job for everyone in the community and uh, you certainly bring all of the news and all of the current events into homes on a regular basis and I personally appreciate it and I know the town does too, so thank you very thank much. Thank you, Judy. I think it's all been said and I think WCTV has been an asset to the town uh, on its upcoming uh, government events and keeping the public aware of what's happening. <clears throat> That's it. That's it. Said that. It's all been said. I entertain a motion. Oh, 
I think they're looking, Mr. Chairman, are you looking to block the street or to use the street? We're going to use the street. There, no, none of the businesses that are there are working on Sunday, and we've spoken to all of them, and they know that we're going to have our event that day. Um, but we are you, you looking to block that street because we're going to use some of the street for the events. Okay. So we'd have to take a motion to... Um, I, I would say I intend a motion to um, utilize Waltham Street uh, on that date because we'll have to make sure that in the event of an emergency, there's nothing that couldn't be moved quickly. Nothing, you know, like you, you wouldn't allow you to put a, you know, a stationary bouncy house or something like that oh, oh, no, in the no. middle of the street. Yeah. But certainly, if there were a table or a chair that could be easily moved. We'd yes. Do that. Yeah. Okay. We'll entertain a motion to that effect. <clears throat> Uh, move to authorize uh, WCTV to uh, use uh, Waltham Street on Sunday, June 10th from 1 to 4 for their 25th anniversary celebration, uh, uh, contingent or not contingent, but per uh, the town manager's suggestion. Second. second. Okay, motion made second. All in favor? <clears throat> Unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck and the next I just want to mention that on this paper, it says everything is free, free, free. <laughs> <laughs> And if somebody had questions, they can ta contact you right at the store. Absolutely. 978-657-4066. What was that? 978-657-4066. Very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I appreciate it. We're going to go on to our 715 appointment. And our 715 appointment is with uh, Scott C. Garant, Chairman of the 4th of July Committee. Uh, to request to use the town common for the annual Fourth of July festivities. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Grant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this year, the events will run from Friday, June 29th through Tuesday, July 3rd. Family Day and the Family Day fireworks will be on Saturday, June 30th. The big night, including the spectacular fireworks, will be on Tuesday, July 3rd, with, as I'm fond of saying, an absolutely unnecessary rain date of the Fourth itself. Uh, officially, our request, therefore, is permission to use the town common from the 29th through the 4th of July, June 29th through July 4th. Once again, uh, we couldn't stage this event without the participation of more than two dozen Wilmington-based nonprofit organizations participating as fundraisers and as donors. Any information regarding the events, including sporting event uh, form, registration forms can be found on our website, which is funonthefourth.com. And I guess for the final time, I want to express my gratitude for the town manager for his ongoing support of this event and all the work that he and his staff and the department heads of, and staff members of the building department, health department, police department, fire department, DPW, public buildings department, and the school department put into this event for the town. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, once again, I want to say thank you and uh, to your unbelievable organization and your members that you have that work so hard all year to uh, to put on this event as well. Any questions, comments from the board? <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's been said. Again. Anything down there? Yeah, just give me the date. It's Friday is the 29th. I can't see the calendar. June the 29th, yes. That's Friday through the yep. Wednesday the 4th. Uh, and the big fireworks. Tuesday the 3rd. Oh, okay, the rain right. date would be the fourth. Got it. Cool. Um, yeah, no, I I would say that too. I mean, you you Fourth uh, of July is really from in my uh, from my vantage point a, a time when uh, folks who may not live in Wilmington get to see us at our best. I think um, it's just such a fun time. I've been, by and large, generally uh, people come and they behave themselves and have a great time, and families can come down and participate in family activities, um, and it's fun for all ages. Uh, and what you and, and the committee do is admirable, and it and it really, it, to me, it reinforces the fabric of what we are as a community. So I'm looking forward to this year and many years to come. Uh, and, and thank you for all your hard work. I, I know you just thanked. You did a very good job, by the way, of not forgetting anyone on the list of, <laughs> of thanking. So uh, kudos to you on that. But thank you for what you guys have always done. Oh, it's, our, it's our pleasure. Thank you. I think it's all been said. I just want to say thank you as well. And I also wanted to. Um, Aside from just the entire event, but just the fact that you always integrate the other organizations within town to give 
um, them an opportunity, which I'm a member of one of those organizations, to fundraise and to be visible out in the community and share what we're doing as well as we're celebrating, you know, a major holiday, you know, for all of us. So I appreciate that. I'm looking forward to it, and I will see everyone down there. Right on. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Entertain a motion to um, grant the request to use the town common for the end of Fourth of July festivities from Friday the 29th of June to Tuesday, July 3rd. So we'll make a motion. Fourth, I mean, we got a motion made. Second. A second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank Good you. luck. Uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I have um, an additional issue this year. Uh, one of the things we deal with every year is outside vendors coming in to sell toys, glow items, ice cream, things like that. My request has those vendors have no bearing on the committee whatsoever, but they do affect, if they come onto the town common and into that area, sales by the community groups. We have community groups that sell ice cream, we have youth hockey that sells glow items and so forth. Um, I have a copy and I've researched the, the town's rules and regulations for hawkers and peddlers, and the board has the authority during the 4th of July celebration to restrict the to define a the vicinity of the town common into which outside vendors can come hawkers and peddlers and also to restrict that area to the exclusive permission of the fourth of july committee and i would request on behalf of the committee that the board just vote tonight to restrict outside vendors to no closer than a half mile to the town common during the dates of our events that you just approved in order to protect the community groups Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to incorporate this part of uh, the motion uh, relative to the dates, as uh, Mr. Grant has uh, stated. Uh, I agree. It should be the community only because it's, it's a town affair. I totally agree. Okay. Any other questions or comments or the motion to that effect? Did we add that to the original motion, I guess? There was another motion? Uh, then I would uh, second uh, Mr. McCoy's motion. Okay. I just have a question about enforcement. I, I, I'm with you 100%. I, I agree on it. Just how well, um, you know, if someone comes inside of that half mile uh, radius, what's what's the penalty? What what are the ramifications, and how do we exercise that? If I miss, Mr. Chairman, we we've had a fair amount of success over the years of um, utilizing the Wilmington police and or just committee members. We've asked the police to join us if someone is really giving us a hard time to say, please, you can't be in the area. The area, as long as I've been on the committee, has never been defined as we're requesting tonight. Last year, we had a gentleman come with an ice cream truck onto private property next to the town common and wouldn't, he refused to move, claiming he had a state license. We couldn't make him move. And frankly, I didn't have the knowledge of the local rules and regulations at that point to be able to tell the police you can make him move. Now I do, and with the board's support, we can enforce that half mile rule and, and protect the groups. Excellent. Asked and answered. Okay. We have a motion made and second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you Good all. Good luck. Thanks for bringing that up. Okay, our <coughs> 720 <coughs> appointment is with Assistant Town Manager Jeffrey M. Hall. Uh, to discuss the employee health insurance plan design changes. Good evening, Mr. Hall. The uh, intent this evening is for me to just uh, provide you with a an overview of <clears throat> uh, some measures that uh, we've taken uh, within the last uh, month or so, uh, actually more than a month, but uh, have been working since March basically to try to um, uh, get some control on our health insurance increases. Uh, as you know, <clears throat> back in July of last year, uh, the governor signed uh, legislation uh, which is specifically known as uh, Chapter 69 of the Acts of 2011, referred to as the uh, Municipal Health Care Reform. What it did was to give uh, cities and towns greater flexibility uh, to make plan design changes. Uh, typically, anytime we make any changes uh, with respect to health insurance in terms of co-pays or deductibles, uh, those issues are subject to collective bargaining. <clears throat> what this law did was to uh, modify that so that if the town by uh, uh, local option 
uh, elected to adopt these particular provisions, uh, the town could pursue two, one of two courses. Uh, the first course would be uh, to uh, make plan design changes, uh, to, to propose some plan design changes, uh, meet with the Insurance Advisory Committee, which is a group that's uh, uh, established under Chapter 32B, which is the health insurance uh, law, and also to, uh, uh, to commission a public employee committee, present them with these plan design changes, and then uh, go through uh, some discussions. There would be a 30-day period of time to do that. Uh, the town would also have to offer uh, what is referred to as uh, mitigation uh, for these changes. Essentially, the premise is to try to uh, cushion the impact to employees. Uh, and if that 30-day negotiation period fails and there's a, a process where a, a separate committee comes in uh, to try to uh, uh, establish the arrangements, that, that was option one. Uh, the second option is uh, for the town to join uh, the Group Insurance Commission. Uh, the Group Insurance Commission is uh, the state agency that governs uh, the health insurance uh, for state employees and increasingly for municipal employees. Uh, there have been a number of uh, communities uh, in the last uh, 18 months or so uh, that have uh, joined the GIC as a <coughs> means to try to um, save money on health insurance. Uh, we decided, the uh, town administration decided to, before we went down one of those roads, uh, to attempt to meet with the insurance advisory committee and the representatives of each of the 12 unions, school and town, and essentially go through what I refer to as an informal process, uh, present a proposal to them. Uh, with the premise of trying to reach agreement without going through these, the structured process that's laid out in the law. Uh, the idea being that if we try this first, uh, if we weren't able to reach consensus with the employee groups, uh, then we would opt to, uh, to exercise the provisions of the law. So we began meeting with uh, the employee groups, the Insurance Advisory Committee, which is, again, it's called for under Chapter 32B. It's made up of representatives of uh, seven, uh, the seven largest unions and one representative from the uh, retiree group. Uh, they're an advisory group. They can make uh, advisory, uh, recommend, uh, advisory notices to uh, the town manager. Uh, the second group we met with, as I said, was, were representatives from each of the unions. So we presented a proposal to increase deductibles and increased co-pays. We had a series of meetings during the month of March and into April, uh, and, and we indicated to the group that our target was to, uh, to reduce the rate of increase by at least 500,000. Um, health insurance, as everybody knows, is uh, a challenge, whether it's the private sector or the public sector. The rate of increase in health insurance uh, is has been significant now for a number of years. Uh, and just by way of information, the, the, the health insurance uh, premiums that we pay, the town pays 75% of the uh, cost of health insurance for employees. That's per collective bargaining agreements. Uh, the vast majority of that cost, 90% of it, is due to the cost of health care, whether it's going to the doctor, going to a hospital, going to a outpatient clinic, that comprises about 90% of the cost. And then the balance is the administrative cost, which is the cost we pay to Blue Cross in our case to administer the plan, and the cost of uh, catastrophic insurance that we have. Uh, so <clears throat> we were fortunate in that the uh, each of the um, employee groups that we dealt with, um, they understood the problem. They understood that health insurance is uh, is rapidly, uh, the cost is increasing both for them as well as us. And in the end, they agreed uh, to make some uh, changes in their uh, health insurance. And I've outlined those to you, but essentially, uh, just by way of some examples here, uh, right now, up through the end of this month, uh, individuals, if they have to go to an emergency room, 
uh, and are not admitted into a hospital, uh, it's a $50 charge. As of June 1st, uh, that will go up to $125. So each time someone goes to the emergency room for a non-admitted non event, uh, that'll cost them $125. Um, <clears throat> uh, surgical office visits uh, under one of the plans that we offered, which is uh, Network Blue, it's an HMO. Uh, there was no charge. Uh, effective June 1st, that'll go up to either 20 or 35, depending upon the type of visit, uh, per visit. Uh, under the Blue Care Elect plan, which is a PPO, uh, individuals are currently paying $15 a visit. That'll go up to $25. Um, the, uh, some, some of the more uh, uh, significant increases on the Blue Care Elect plan, the PPO has an in-network and an out-of-network feature so that uh, if people use the doctors and hospitals within the Blue Cross network, they pay one rate. If they go out of network, they pay a different rate, and they actually pay a higher rate. Uh, typically, when they go to uh, a provider, uh, they have to pay 20% of the charge uh, under the Blue Care Elect plan. Uh, through the end of the month, uh, their out-of-pocket costs would be capped at $1,000 for an individual plan and 2000 for a family plan. As of June 1st, those numbers will now go up so that uh, they'll be capped at $2,000 for an individual plan and $4,000 for a family. So that means uh, if a family were to go out of network, uh, they would have to pay the first $4,000 before um, the, the uh, cap takes effect. And then just uh, a couple of other examples in terms of inpatient care. Uh, someone has an overnight uh, stay. Uh, currently under both these plans, uh, there's no initial charge for that. Effective June 1st, uh, the employee will pay the first $250 per visit. So if somebody goes to Leahy and they uh, spend the night, uh, they're paying the first $250. Uh, the other change that was uh, implemented or that will be implemented as of June 1st uh, is the cost of prescriptions. Uh, right now, and, and, and prescriptions, as you can imagine, because uh, so, so many folks are on prescriptions of one form or another, is a, um, a major cost and it continues to escalate. Right now, um, under both of the plans that we offer, uh, if you get a generic uh, prescription, which is a non-name brand, uh, it's $20 uh, per prescription. If it's a name brand uh, prescription, it's uh, it was, it's 10 for generic, uh, 20 for name brand, and then if it's a uh, high-priced name brand that has a uh, cheaper alternative, uh, the person would pay $35. Uh, those as of June 1st, those rates will go up to 15, 25, and 40, respectively. Um, so those, uh, those are some of the changes that will be uh, taking effect. Uh, you know, I want to point out that uh, we really appreciate the, uh, the work and the efforts of the employees uh, involved because clearly uh, they're going to see an impact here. There is going to be uh, greater cost sharing on their part. Uh, one of the ways that uh, that employees are able to offset that to some degree is uh, through the flexible spending account that we offer. We've offered this for a number of years now. So people can uh, put money aside, have it taken out of their check uh, on a weekly basis, and it's, uh, it's pre-taxed, so they're not taxed on the amount, the amount that's coming out into this fund. And then they draw down that money for out-of-pocket expenses. So. Uh, we're, we're encouraging people uh, to do that. So the expectation is that, uh, with these changes uh, that the budget that we're projecting for fiscal 2013 will be about $10.3 million uh, versus what we were looking at had we not taken this action, which would have been about $10.8 million. Uh, the other, uh, I think, very good um, accomplishment that was made here is that uh, Master Medical, which uh, I believe was the first plan that was offered to 
employees uh, when insurance was first offered back probably in the 1940s. Uh, that had been a long-standing plan. It was a plan that did not offer uh, any prevent preventive care benefits. Uh, it was created in another era when health prevention really wasn't uh, uh, something that was considered. Uh, it didn't have the contractual agreements that the current contracts do. Uh, right now, for example, under Blue Care Elect and uh, Network Blue, a Blue Cross negotiates with providers so that if someone goes for an appendectomy, uh, they've already negotiated with Dr. X that, you know, this cost is going to be $3,000. Under Master Medical, that same procedure could have been five or $6,000. So obviously we were, for the last uh, eight or nine years now, trying to uh, get that plan uh, removed. And again, because of the collective bargaining process, that's not something we can simply just take away. It does require collective bargaining. Uh, over time, we've uh, been able to reach agreement with all of the general government uh, unions uh, to have that plan removed. And during this process that we just concluded recently, uh, the members of the uh, school uh, unions also agreed to remove Master Medical. So uh, that will also uh, help us in the long run because that was a, a plan that really did not have any cost controls. So. Um, you know, I think it's good news. Uh, you know, I wish I could say that we were able to uh, reduce health insurance costs, but as a, the reality is that, you know, we, we, I think the best we can do at this point is to slow the rate of increase, uh, and that's what we're that's what we're doing here. Thank, thank you, Mr. Hall. That was a good presentation. Uh, it, it is a pretty confusing um, item. Uh, insurances and I think you do a good job of uh, trying to help control the cost and at least um, slowing down the increase like you just said and I appreciate that any questions or comments from the board yeah, no thank you mr. Ch uh, chairman no, Jeff I think you've done an outstanding job on that simply put health insurance skyrockets year after year after year I mean I'm independent like many people up here independent that pay for that it's ridiculous on what we pay I mean I tell my wife I could be leasing a Escalade she could lease an Escalade and my son can probably get a small Hyundai, you know? But the truth of the matter is, what we need to do, and I think people out there, over a period of years, that we've done a decent job as far as collective bargaining, getting rid of mass and medical. There's still other options available that are good options, and people need to understand that, and I think they do. And we're trying to do the best we can, as you stated, trying to save people in this town some money because it's just out of control. It just goes up year after year, and you know, and it's unfortunately, if you don't have health insurance these days, that you're penalized. You know, so I think that's kind of a sad thing for individuals, myself personally. But, you know, we're doing what we can. I think we've done a decent job. And I think people realize it's just, it, gets, it grows bigger and bigger every year. And uh, we're doing the best we can. And I think the town has done a good job in negotiations, as you stated. And it's, the board has done a decent job relative to that. So once again, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, we're on the right path, the right direction. and. People need to understand that because we're not alone. People out there who put the bill in this town, the taxpayers, they pay insurance. They understand. So we're working together. Thank you. I, I agree with what's been said. The uh, the other, I guess, a comment, um, not as much a question, um, would just be to um, note that you had indicated in your presentation that um, some of the pre-tax deductions that the town is offered will continue to enable folks to, to budget uh, for some of these increases in deductibles and co-pays. Um, what was in your memo, and you may have said it and I missed it, but I think is worth uh, highlighting, is that when the employees, uh, you know, covering 25 percent of their coverage uh, in terms of the, uh, the cost, uh, obviously as the cost goes down, that their 25 percent goes down as well. And I, I know in your uh, memo you, you quote some uh, statistics there. So uh, for folks who may be listening in, uh, you know, there's obviously a benefit to uh, the town and to the employees. And, um, you know, that's what makes it a, a bit of a win-win. The, the other thing, speaking of that, that I would just point out, which uh, the uh, when, when President Obama adopted the Affordable Care Act uh, or, or signed it into law, uh, there were provisions in there that uh, indicated that any time an employer made changes to health insurance, 
uh, that the employer had to pick up first dollar coverage for uh, wellness visits. So historically, uh, with respect to our two plans, the Network Blue and the Blue Care Elect, if someone went uh, for a physical or took their uh, child for a physical, there was a $10 office copay. Uh, with these changes, we have to adopt the federal law. So in, in one respect, e even though there are some hardships here for the employees in terms of picking up additional copays, they will, will benefit in that particular instance because uh, these uh, wellness visits, there will be no first dollar charge to the uh, employee. So any questions or comments on that? No, I think it's all been said. I, you know, I too want to commend you, Jeff, for putting this all together. Uh, certainly, in summary, it's very difficult to, you know, incorporate all of the nuances that are here, and you certainly have done a fine job in doing that. Um, I think it's clear that we're, the town is doing the best we can with the given situation. I think this is a, a bigger issue in terms of health and uh, health care costs rising. That is beyond just the town of Wilmington. Uh, obviously, when you see increases. Um, of any magnitude, it, it's difficult to absorb um, as an individual that might be on the plan, but it's necessary. It's clearly articulated why it's necessary, and um, certainly I know that every effort's been made to uh, assist the employees with the health insurance to the best of everyone's ability. So um, I do appreciate your efforts, and I thank you for the briefing on it. I, um, yeah, th thank you, Jeff. I, I look at what Network Blue current and uh, the current Blue Care Elect, what the charges were in the blue sheet, um, and where we are going as of June 1st, to me, and I don't want to profess to be an expert in uh, private sector health insurance, but as a participant or a subscriber to a plan, that seems very similar or consistent with what I, I imagine with, the, with what the private sector offers, what, corpora uh, what corporations offer their employees. So I think we're just, we're bringing our municipal uh, health insurance program in line with what people expect in the private sector and I think that makes sense I think we have to run our town like a business and, and I commend you for bringing us to that to that level um, as much as it's not a half a million dollars in savings it really kind of is it's a reduction in increase right is that right. How, how to word it so uh, you know if we didn't have that reduction in increase that'd be a half a million dollars we'd have to spend so I guess it is savings no matter how you look at it um, I thank you for uh, for staying keeping your eye on the ball and and looking for every, looking under every rock to, to save us a buck. Uh, so much obliged. And, and I, you know, I want to also express appreciation to the, the representatives of the employee groups, uh, the unions, uh, for keeping an open mind and coming to the table and speaking openly and uh, professionally and understanding that we're all in this together. I know there's, you know, if we, if we weren't able to come to those conclusions at the, at the discussion tables, we could have gone to the next step. And who knows, maybe that gets contentious or whatever. And I'm glad to say that that didn't have to happen. So thanks to all the, all the representatives. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. What's, are, you are you a town employee, Mr. Uh, um, Mr. McDonald? Talk about town employees insurance. What's your point of order? Um, unless you're willing to let us ask some questions now, just like to request Mr. Hall to stay here for public comments to ask some questions. You have a question right now for Mr. Hall. I have a few questions about um, employee health insurance. And I'm actually glad Mr. Hayden's here because he's on the finance committee. Um, I was actually at a finance committee meeting where the action that was taken place was transferring $350,000. Yes, and, Mr. Uh, uh, McDonald, you've asked us many, many times, yeah, many, Mr. many Hayden, meetings. Uh, go, go ahead. Mr. Hayden is here, and um, at that meeting, we were told that the contract with Blue Cross Blue Shield was for $9 million. Now we're hearing it go up to $10.3 million. Um, and we were told that at that meeting, the deductible was $100,000, yeah. correct, Mr. Hayden? I don't have my notes with me, and I don't recall well, it back I recall meeting, it because so. I, I, I was pretty clear on that. So we were told at the meeting that it was a $100,000 deductible, a $9 million contract. Mr. Hull, could you tell us if, in fact, that the actual deductible is $150,000? Mr. McDonald, I would like to ask the town manager to answer your question again. Right. that he's done in the finance committee, selectman meetings, and I think even at the uh, town meeting. But Mr. Well, Kyra, if I, you would... I, I, I answered this question the, the last time, and certainly Mr. Hull is very 
capable of answering it, and, and he can certainly uh, fill in the blanks if I missed anything. But I'm, I appreciate having the opportunity to, to speak to it because this has been asked and answered three or four times by you, Mr. McDonald, at these meetings. I indicated to you that you were at a finance committee meeting, which I was not at, and neither was Mr. Hall at that, particular, Hall at that particular meeting, and a question was asked, and you were, it was suggested to you that you needed to ask that question to Mr. Hall, and I have suggested that on several occasions. And so uh, there is no contract for $9 million with Blue Cross as you continue to um, make that statement, and you've been told that. The budget amount of money for employee health insurance was um, approximately uh, $9 million, $9 million plus at the time that you asked. That was the budget uh, amount. Um, in that, at that particular meeting, I believe you um, were advised that they were transferring <coughs> some $300,000 from the Finance Committee um, Reserve Account to uh, supplement that budget amount. Uh, we just did something very similar at this most recent meeting when we transferred uh, $450,000 uh, to the uh, current fiscal year budget for health insurance. Uh, that was done by action of the uh, town meeting. Uh, you may have been told by someone that the deductible on catastrophic illness per individual was $100,000. But when you raised this uh, several months ago, uh, you were told, actually probably uh, uh, close to a year ago, you were told that if somebody gave you that information, it was wrong because it changed to $150,000. And so that's the number today. That's the number that you were told the last time you asked the question. The budget request for this year, fiscal year 2013, for employee health and life insurance is $10,316,000. Um, that's the amount that we feel is based upon these changes that are being made is what the town will uh, need to pay. It comes to less than 12% of the town budget, which is about where most communities uh, are. Some are a little higher up to 14 and 15 percent. Uh, we're around, we're a little under 12 percent. So just a clarification, the town is self-insured. The town has an um, agreement with Blue Cross Blue Shield for $10,316,000. No, I did not say that. The town has no agreement with Blue Cross Blue Shield for $10.3 million. $10 million. Um, it's just like saying the town has an agreement with uh, snowplow contractors for $547,000. Uh, if there's only $250,000 in snow removal, that's what we'd spend. And so what I'm saying to you is it's the health insurance budget. Is a, I'm, I'm sorry you don't understand this concept, but it's very different. One is expenditures, and, it's, and what we're saying in the budget is that we anticipate that we will need about $10.3 million in fiscal year 2013. Blue Cross administers the program and charges an administrative fee, uh, which Mr. Hall alluded to, uh, that is probably uh, um, about 500,000 or so. Jeff, you can uh, probably come right off the top of your head and give me the number. Right? 60,000 uh, a month, I believe. A little over 600000 for, um, for administrative fees that, that go to Blue Cross to administer the program. Okay. I understand that, the administration fees. Can you tell us the cost of the stop-loss insurance, What if that's over and above the administration fee? Yes. And can we get a confirmation from Mr. Hull if the deductible is $150,000 before we see a dime from that stop loss insurance. <laughs> no, that's not how it works, but <laughs> go ahead. You, you can give it a try, <laughs> Jeff. The deductible is $150,000. Uh, up until let's see, up until uh, June 1st of 2000. 
uh, 11. Up until that point, we had a, a deductible that was at $100,000. Uh, one of the things that we have to do uh, as part of our budget process, uh, and even beyond that, on a regular basis, is to look at the number of claims we have and the cost uh, of those claims. Just like, you know, when you have homeowner's insurance, uh, if you're paying $1,000 for homeowner's insurance and you have a $1,000 deductible and you're consistently getting close to $1,000 every year in terms of cost, the insurance company is obviously in business to make money, so they're going to say, we're going to have to increase your rate because we're not if we're collecting a thousand from you and we're paying out a thousand, we're not making any money, so we're going to increase your rates. The same holds true with uh, health reinsurance, which is basically saying that the town is uh, purchasing a high deductible policy. So up until 6 1 2011, we said that for each individual who got sick, we would pay the first hundred thousand dollars in health insurance claims. If they went to the hospital, if, you know, God forbid they had cancer, whatever, uh, the first $100,000 the town was going to pay. When it exceeded 100000 then the reinsurance carrier paid the balance. So we had uh, some, unfortunately, some uh, bad experience, and it caused the premium that we were paying for the $100,000 uh, deductible to increase to the point that we felt it would be to our advantage to increase that deductible from 100,000 to 150,000. So the the net effect was that we assumed more of the risk and at the same time we lowered our premium. You know, it's always it, it, it these things aren't black and white. You're projecting into the future. You're trying to figure out, you know, based upon statistics, what's the average number of employees and their kids and their wives and spouses that are going to get sick over the course of a year and you know how is that going to affect our rates so we you know we make the best uh, estimates we can in this case we made a determination that it was in our best interest to increase the deductible so as of June 1 2011 through the present uh, we have now a $150,000 deductible per uh, individual and, and if I could just point out that there there may be the um, uh, the clue to why um, whoever said to you it was $100,000, because the meeting that you attended was in late June, which was the typical meeting that's conducted by the town accountant in late June of 2011. And at that particular meeting, uh, and it may have been early July, but at that particular meeting, um, we had already gone to the 150. But there might have been some confusion in terms of um, the question you were asking. So the prior year, which is in this case 11 months of the fiscal year, since it ends on June 1st, was it in fact 100,000, and then it became 150,000. Thank you, Mr. Hull. That was a good analogy. Any other questions? Yeah, Any other? Mr. To Lee, no, Mr. Mr. McDonald, you're not going to hijack this meeting, Mr. Lingenfeld. Mr. Lingenfeld. Mr. Lingenfeld. I think it was a brief and possibly helpful comment. I'm also a small business owner. I write a check to Blue Cross every year, and I'm aware of all these problems. And I think Jeff's done about the best he could to deal with the problem in the system. My, my comment is in regards to uh, correcting systems. It's my understanding that when Romney Care was implemented in Massachusetts, uh, there was the uh, no cost control elements of the legislation were implemented. It was all pre-existing condition, uh, that kind of uh, uh, aspect of that was, was, was brought in and changed by the state legislature, but none of the cost control uh, struck uh, the legislation that was supposed to accompany it was, init was uh, in initiated, and perhaps through the Mass Municipal Association that I know the town belongs to. I'm not saying solely as a lone participant, but uh, groups like the, the Mass Municipal Association and other large unions and not using lobbies, they get their own insurance. But you may be able to help uh, lobby the state legislator to go back and implement a lot of those cost control structures. You know, not, not simply, I just want to throw that comment out to you that as your members attend the Mass Municipal Association meetings and read the bulletin flyers and talk to other members, you know, perhaps your group and other groups could bring pressure on the state legislator to imp imp implement some of those originally proposed five or six years ago uh, legislations that were supposed to help limit cost control, you know, limit the, the, the huge astronomical increases in cost. So I just pass that on as a comment. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hull. It's now uh, a little past 7.40, but it's the, the agenda I, item to reorganization of the Board of Selectmen. This is the point where we, uh, I guess, appoint a new chairman. Uh, I'd just like to say a few words. I have been extremely proud to say that I have been the chairman of this Board of Selectmen in this town and what we've accomplished over the past two years in a very small part of what I have done as chairman, but a big part of what we've done as a board. Um, with Mr. Kyra, the town manager, his staff, it's been an amazing two years. It's been an amazing five years since I've been on the board just to watch what happens in municipal government and all the work that is done quite literally behind the scenes and after hours when a lot of people are working many, many hours um, for no financial gain if you're on salary. Uh, so again, I, I'm proud to say that I've been on this board for the past five years, proud to say I've been the chairman. Um, the next year that we have coming up uh, for Wilmington, I believe is gonna be an extremely important, important year. Um, we have the, the new high school, <clears throat> excuse me, hopefully we're gonna be breaking ground on a new high school this year. We are gonna be appointing a new town manager this year, uh, buying property. Um, it's, I, the last, well, the last, let me, let me just say this. I think the year that's coming up is going to be extremely important. We as a board do not discuss what's gonna happen here tonight. This is just an agenda item. And what I'm, I'm recommending, and no disrespect to anybody on this board, and no disrespect to any past chairmen on this board, I think the next year coming up, um, I think Mike Newhouse will be an, uh, a worthy candidate, a worthy chairman for the work he's done in the past, just specifically recently the work he's done on the school building committee, um, his history with the town, working with the town manager, the transition of a new town manager, and again, no disrespect to any, any, ch any members here or past chairman. And uh, I just wanted to throw that out there um, because it's, it's, that's the agenda item for the time to talk about reorganization of the board. Mr. Chairman, if I can make yeah. a quick comment, if I could, please. Uh, I'd just like to say I think you've done an outstanding job as chairman over the past two years. We've had some trying moments, many meetings, and I'm sure we're going to weather that storm. Uh, I would also like to say that I'm sure some thought and some input is going into the decision of the next chairman. I also would like the full membership to know and the general public to know that I myself am very interested in being the next chairman if there's support out there. And just to bring up a little bit, enough enough, a year ago I ran for selectman and being an incumbent for like 21 years, uh, you know, I ran independently. Not only did I top the ticket, I, I, I uh, got more votes than any contested election uh, last year. Uh, I've extended all the branches to those individuals and respect those individuals have extended all the branches to me. I believe I can do just as much in this chair as I could in the Senate chair. And it's not an ego thing for me to be chairman, but I just want our residents to know that there is another interest on that. And, you know, being a member of the board for 22 years, that speaks volumes. Not only did I win, I taught the ticket. And being an incumbent for 21 years, that's kind of unheard of. Incumbents usually get voted out or whatever, but I believe I've been very independent, and I think that's what transpired in that election. I've been a member of the board for 22 years, and I've been chairman three times. And I also think that speaks volumes, and somebody would be bitter to say I've been only chairman three times, but it speaks volumes. That also speaks volumes of independence. But, you know, I just wanted to put that out there, and uh, like I said, I just think, you know, we have difference of opinions. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, we try to take care of the people's business. I know, just like you and everybody here, when we come Monday, we try to get the public's trust, and we do a decent job. People get a lot of services for their uh, dollar in this community, and I respect the thought and decision that goes in it, but I want the full membership to know, once again, the general public, that I, too, am interested in it. And I just thought I'd put it out. I'm not going to be bitter. I know it's not going to happen. I'm not going to be bitter about it, but it just needs to be said. Yeah. And I put that out there, and if there's any thought to it, fine. You know, but yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. you, and that's yeah. why I preface my comments with um, suggesting Mr. Newhouse was uh, nothing against anybody on this board. I think anybody on this board could do a wonderful job on the chair, and especially uh, a past uh, past chairman. Um, no disrespect to two years, and but I understand how that works. What you're going to do is enter uh, nominations, and if I had to put my name into motion, if I, if I could, I would like to put my name into motion as chairman, and if there's a second. So be it. You know, if there's not, hey, I'm a big boy. You know? <laughs> Any questions or comments down here? Well, I'm, I just before we go too far into the conversation, I'm sorry, Judy, you didn't, I, no, I, I didn't mean to jump in, but I did. 
Um, I just is are you uh, Mike Newhouse? Your name is being lobbed around here. Are you interested in, in, in the nomination if if, one, if there was one made? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I think we have an embarrassment of riches on this on this board right now. Um, uh, because frankly, I feel very confident that any one of us, and, and I include myself, frankly, now I've been here for three years, and I, I feel like I, uh, I've got the chops to probably handle the job. Um, but I feel like any one of us could handle the job. Uh, Lou, you've demonstrated it. Mike, you've demonstrated it. Mike, I know you've demonstrated it. Um, Judy, I have complete confidence in your abilities, and, and frankly, I have confidence in my own. So, you know, I, I, I think no matter what direction we end up uh, taking here tonight. The town will be well served, and the, this board will be well served. Um, I had, frankly, I had come here tonight uh, thinking, I think, along the lines of Mike, a little, uh, uh, Mr. McCoy, a little bit. Um, I was going to ask for a nomination as well, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I've, I think you made some very, very salient points, uh, Lou, about uh, where we are currently with everything that's on the radar screen. Uh, over the course of the next 12 months or so, yeah. uh, with the high school, uh, with the town manager situation, with the the, the I think there's a, a real need to have someone working closely with the existing and the incoming town manager who has a unique appreciation for, unique understanding of the municipal process, both here in Wilmington as well as sort of. Uh, Massachusetts based and so yeah I, I would based on that and based on your comments I would retract my my I guess my request for a nomination at least this year um, it's I would like to sit as chair of this board at some point in my uh, my career as an elected member so um, I love that out there but I, I wouldn't say it for this year I uh, I take your your comments to heart Mr. Smagley and I'm just gonna mull it over for a minute while I listen to Judy's thoughts if you have no I definitely have thoughts uh, certainly I appreciate all the comments that were made and um, I too think that any one of us sitting here on the board would certainly do uh, an outstanding job in the chair position um, I put a lot of thought into this coming into this evening and you know obviously when we, we are candid with our discussions and our comments I certainly don't mean any disrespect towards anyone on the board if um, I'm leaning towards any particular nomination I came into this evening um, if Mr. Somalia did not um, you know, put a nomination out for Mr. Newhouse. I was planning on doing that. Um, I believe that all of us have our own skill sets coming into it. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of history and experience here on the board. Uh, certainly, you can't um, diminish or, or reduce or take away any of the accomplishments that you've had, Mr. McCoy, on the board over these, these years. Uh, Mr. Newhouse also comes into it with uh, an extensive history on the board um, in excess of 12 years. Uh, certainly has done an excellent job in that capacity, has been very easy to work with, has uh, managed the meetings, the preliminary discussions that we've had about a potential new town manager coming on board, and uh, certainly I think would be worthy of a nomination. Um, I also like the idea of the historian knowledge uh, from the legal perspective, uh, in addition the fact that he sits as a member of the Board of Selectmen on the High School Building Committee and we all know that the two biggest items that are on the agenda for the town moving forward is the new high school as well as the uh, new appointment of a town manager. So I would like to uh, second your uh, nomination for Mr. Newhouse for further discussion. Okay. Um, just want the record show nobody said, uh, asked me if I wanted it again for another year. <laughs> <laughs> we have a. I kind of got the vibe that you were <laughs> not interested when you said you were nominating Mike. <laughs> okay, we have a. Um, really, Mr. McDonald. Really, please. Really, really. No, no. You're, you're done. No. Any other comments? We have a, um, a motion made. Uh, I guess a motion made and seconded. Um, any other comments or any other motions? I know you said you were going to wait, Mr. Shampoo. Yeah. No, I was. I was. No, I have no more comments to make. I guess uh, a motion's been made and seconded. Um, I, you know, I, I guess, can you, did Mr. McCoy make a motion for himself? Can he do that? Yeah. Because I would yeah. certainly second his. I, I want to I give everyone the opportunity to vote for the person that, they're, that they want to vote for. In the absence of someone seconding his vote, or seconding his, not his nomination, then no one can vote. And I, I feel like that's... Um, 
I don't know. I, Let me just say, I appreciate the notion, but I do remember you stating about 30 seconds ago your support. So I, I mean, just I, think that does, I'm not trying to be disingenuous, doesn't do anything Mike, but I, 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 to me, you know, you know, but I appreciate the notion, but I just, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll just say that. <laughs> all right. I guess um, we have a motion made and seconded. Um, all in favor to have to appoint uh, Mr. Newhouse as the chairman of this board for the next 12 months. Yeah, I vote in favor of Mike Newhouse. Okay, um, opposed? I'm just going to abstain. Abstain? Okay. All right. That's it, right? I give you the gavel right now? Yes, sir. Okay. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, McDonald. I'm not the chair anymore. Thank you. Good time, Mr. Nagler. <laughs> Good luck. Well, uh, thank you for the vote of confidence. I uh, look forward to the next year and um, just keep it simple and say that uh, I look forward to continuing to work with the entire board to uh, take care of the town's business and um, keep moving forward at, at every meeting. Thank you. Uh, that, uh, could we proceed with communications, Ms. Carter? Mr. Chairman, uh, congratulations. And uh, we have a letter from uh, Carolyn Harrison, uh, Carolyn Harris, Chairperson of the Historical Commission, and uh, Theresa McDermott, the Museum Curator, um, inviting the members of the Board of Selectmen to attend a dedication ceremony uh, at the Wilmington Town Pond on Thursday, May 17th at 1 p.m. Um, uh, to recognize the new gate that had been installed um, at the uh, town's uh, town pond, which is located by the old burial ground next to the Congregational Church. Uh, in the summer of 2010, the pond, uh, which was originally built in 1814, was rebuilt on its current site uh, due to a homeowner's desire to have the original town pond removed from uh, private property. Um, we we're very pleased that we were able to save this resource from extinction by rebuilding it in its current location. Uh, following the rebuilding of the pound, uh, a local resident, Marion Bradford, volunteered to pay for the installation of an appropriate wooden gate at the entrance to the town pound. Uh, and this has been done, and Miss Bradford is uh, requesting to dedicate the gate to her husband, the late Milton Bradford, who resided in town and was very active in civic affairs until his death in 2008. Uh, the Historical Commission is grateful for her efforts and generosity um, in allowing us to complete the town pound. Uh, with that appropriate gate and uh, members of the public and the, and the press and anybody interested are invited to join with any member of the Board of Selectmen and the Historical Commission uh, to attend that ceremony on Thursday, May 17th at 1 p.m. Uh, the town has information from Kim Gainsborough, who is uh, Chairman, and Susan Corcoran and Kathleen McNally, Commissioners of the Alcoholic Beverages Control <coughs> Commission, uh, regarding upcoming public hearings that are being conducted relative to updating or amending what is referred to as the happy hour regulation. Uh, you note when the various meetings are going to take place. Uh, the two meetings closest to Wilmington are, is June 19th, the Chelmsford Police Station from 10 to 12 p.m., and uh, also uh, August 21st at the McCormick Building at the 21st floor conference room in Boston from 10 a.m. to uh, noon. Uh, and what the uh, commission is doing is essentially looking to see if they should update or amend uh, any of the um, uh, happy hour regulations in order to protect on-premises alcoholic beverages licenses from unfair competition with any of the proposed gaming establishments. So if anybody's interested, they can uh, uh, attend one of those hearings. We have a correspondence from David Matthews, the chairman of the Lunenburg Board of Selectmen, regarding um, a case called Lunenburg Zoning Board of Appeals versus Housing Appeals Committee. Uh, and they were requesting amicus briefs from uh, different communities asking uh, them to join in their fight uh, <coughs> to uh, prevent a, a Chapter uh, 40B 136-unit uh, condominium project uh, from being uh, developed in the town of Lunenburg. Uh, their Board of Appeals had um, rejected the comprehensive permit. Uh, the uh, Housing Appeals Committee rendered a uh, favorable decision. Uh, the 
issue that they indicate uh, is that it's a change in their zoning. Well, of course, that's what 40B is. It, uh, the, the law itself allows you uh, to um, avoid zoning. In their case, uh, their planning concerns concern the expansion of their uh, sewer system, which is very similar to the original uh, issue that we dealt with back when uh, Avalon came in, I think it was Princeton Properties originally, then that went to uh, to Avalon. One issue here is that uh, we understand Lunenburg only has about 3 percent, less than 4 percent of uh, um, affordable housing. Um, they indicated that someone would be contacting uh, the different towns uh, to indicate whether or not, uh, or to assess whether or not uh, we wanted to participate in an amicus brief. We've not received any um, any contacts. My my recommendation would be for the town not to get involved. In this. I, I, I feel obliged to at least comment about it. I I, uh, I appreciate your recommendation, Mr. Carr. I really do. I, these kind of communications that we get from other communities, you know, I I, I feel like we want to be neighborly, <laughs> uh, but I don't feel like there's enough information here uh, to, to, to take any action. So it, it seems, I mean, it, so your indication, I didn't read where that had said that, but you had indication that uh, they were going to reach out and try to educate us or, or bring us more information beyond what the scope of what this letter is? Yeah, the last line, um, I or our attorney, Dan Hill, will follow okay. up with you shortly to discuss this request. My, my reasoning is that, um, I, you know, I think I'm not sure how people feel on this, but I think something like this, you're tilting at windmills. We've been through this before. But uh, the town of Wilmington has worked hard to um, meet their obligations with affordable housing, and, and we'll have the 10 percent affordable housing that's required. Um, and I, I think part of the problem is many communities have not made a proactive effort to do it. And this law has been around for, what, 25, 30 years? And, you know, people have tried to change it. It hasn't changed. It's not likely to change. And the town has um, instead, um, you know, put its nose to the grindstone and, and done what a lot of communities have done and provided for affordable housing. Um, the fact that apparently the town of Lunenburg has not, I, I don't think should be the town of Wilmington's problem. I guess that's my, my feeling. And that's fair. So their hope is that if they got Wilmington and, and a, you know, a host of other towns to, to send in these ambicus or friend of the court briefs, that it would show some critical core or, or like, look, our, our, our you know, other towns are, are dealing with our <coughs> position on this and it would give some momentum to them? Is that the argument? I, I expect so. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Chairman, if I could say just a touch upon what the town manager said. Being around a long time, I know we had the rep and the senator here, and I agree with the town manager. And I remember saying several times, nothing's really changed. It used to be uh, chapter, was it 40B, 40, uh, 40B, you know? And uh, simply put, I mean, there's a big difference between city life and country life. And we live out here in the country, and it would be nice if they did adopt changes for the country compared to city, because there is a big difference uh, in the settings, geographically, Woods, etc. So obviously they need to take that into uh, consideration, and that hasn't been done. And if I think they did take a consideration in doing that, then things would be a little bit more positive, I would think, relative to situations like that we just talked about. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have correspondence uh, that was directed to um, Mr. Anasight. Uh, in the past, the same correspondence has come either to the chairman of the board or to myself, but but it came from the. Uh, MWRA, uh, and specifically Meg Tabasco, who is the manager of the MWRA school program regarding the 31st annual poster and writing contest that um, students uh, whose communities are in the MWRA uh, district are invited to participate in. And we're pleased to note that once again the town of Wilmington um, is among those uh, communities who had uh, students uh, participate and, in fact, um, win and be recognized. And uh, four of our students are being recognized, uh, all from the high school, all in the writing category. Uh, they include Tristan Hayes, who is uh, second place, and also Robbie Maley, Kimberly Downs, and Katie McNeil, um, who all received honorable mention. Uh, Tristan Hayes 
is uh, in uh, grade 11, and the other three individuals are in grade uh, 9. I've sent them a, um, a letter congratulating them on their awards, and there will be a, an award uh, ceremony held on May 25th. Uh, we have a letter from Jane Lyman of Xfinity regarding uh, updates uh, to service. This information has all gone out to their subscribers. They're indicating that uh, TiVo is no longer available for new subscriptions, uh, that they have uh, added uh, certain channels and removed others, um, and also effective July 1st, they will be charging $1.99 per month for each new digital adapter <coughs> or additional outlet that is subscribed to on or after July 1st by customers with digital starter and above service. Uh, but you should consult your uh, your bill. They will uh, provide that information to you. Uh, we also have... Excuse uh, me, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. McDonald, you're, you're mouthing a lot to me. Is there a question you'd like to ask me or the, the finger motions? Does that mean anything, Mr. McDonald? I, if, um, I could finish my question on... Uh, no, no, you, you, were, you were making motions with your hands and your mouth, Mr. McDonald. Yeah. I'm not the chairman anymore. You might want to go to the chair if you have a question. Okay. All right? Stop the nonsense and grow up, Mr. McDonald. No, I'm just wondering if, um, if I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Chairman and uh, Mr. Kyle. Yes, okay, I'll pay attention. Yeah. Um, we have a correspondence uh, from Mary Freer of Verizon Files regarding rate changes for cable equipment, and again, they've notified the uh, community as they are bound to do, and they've also are notifying their customers. Uh, that of these rate changes for equipment. Uh, the monthly rate for a Files TV set top boxes, digital adapters, and multi-room DVRs and equipment packages uh, will be increasing by uh, $2 each. Um, Mr. Chairman, we have uh, communications from uh, individuals who are interested in appointments, which are the responsibility of the Board of Selectmen. They include a communication from Thomas Syracuse, uh, and a request to be appointed as a member of the uh, Board of Appeals. Uh, you have a copy of that uh, letter from uh, Mr. Syracuse. Uh, we also have a letter from Gary De Palma, the chair of the Wilmington Democratic Town Committee, uh, responding to the uh, Board's request uh, to make a recommendation with regard to the Board of Registrars, and he indicates that the Democratic Town Committee voted to uh, again, recommend that Alice Hooper represents the Democratic Party on the Board of Registrars. We have uh, letters from Paul Bruce, Ronald DiGiorgio, David Muscovitz, and John Rowine, all requesting to be reappointed as constables. Um, <coughs> and that would bring us, Mr. Chairman, to the uh, appointments uh, section of the agenda. I have uh, provided the Board um, with a list of incumbents who may be considered for reappointment. Uh, appointments and reappointments are been scheduled for today's meeting, and uh, they include a, uh, an appointment to the Board of Appeals. The Board of Appeals position is a five-year term, which is due to expire in uh, 2017. It has become uh, vacant, as uh, the Board knows that uh, Robert Spencer uh, indicated that he would not uh, be standing for reappointment. Do we have any questions, comments, or a motion regarding the Board of Appeals? Mr. Chairman, first of all, I'd like us to send a letter to uh, Bob Spencer. Obviously, he's done an outstanding job as a member of the Board of uh, Appeals, also as the Chief of Police. And I wish Mr. Spencer and his family all the best. If I could, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, uh, support Tom Syracuse for the post of Board of Appeals, which the term will expire in 2017. Second. Made and seconded. Anything further? All in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, Board of Registrars, a three-year term to expire in 2015. The incumbent is Alice Hooper, who has the recommendation of the Town Democratic Committee. Questions, comments, or a motion? Move to approve Alice Hooper as uh, to the Board of Registrars, three-year term to expire 2015. Second. Any second? And any further? All in favor? It's unanimous. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, counsel for the arts, two-year terms to expire in 2014. The candidates are Sarah Campbell, Jean Chang, Marguerite Eli, and Barbara Forrestal. Questions, comments, or a motion? Motion to accept, accept the uh, Council of Arts for a two-year term to expire in 2014. That's read by the town manager. We have a second. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, an appointment to the Council for the Arts Advisory Board, a one-year term to expire in 2013. Uh, Linda Malloy. Motion. So moved. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, a one-year term as fence viewer that would expire a year from now in 2013. The incumbents are Anthony Pronsky, Jr. and John T. Spaulding. Move, motion. move to appoint uh, Anthony Pronsky, Jr. and John T. Spaulding as fence viewers, one-year term to expire 2013. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Town Council for a one-year term to expire June 30th, 2013. The incumbent is John Foskett of the firm Deutsch, Williams, Brooks, Dorensis, and Holland, PC. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, constables for a one-year term to expire June 30th, 2013 without restrictions. Paul D. Bruce, Jr., Alan C. Hunter, Charles E. Rooney, Jr. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. <coughs> Seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, with a restriction not to solicit clients, but have authority to serve civil process for clients who need service into Wilmington, John B. Bridges, Jr., Ronald M. B. Giorgio, Wilfred A. Lambert, John Milano, David H. Muscovitz, William F. A. Pepicelli, John J. Rewine, Anthony J. <coughs> Saya, and William J. Zampel, Jr. We have a motion. So moved. Second. And seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. I might, as the board is aware, because they have the uh, <coughs> correspondence, all of these individuals have received a review and an endorsement by the chief of police and the uh, Tom Clark. I shouldn't use the term endorsement, but they've all received a favorable review on their application. Uh, and then Ellen G. Davis Sawyer, uh, in conjunction with her duties as an animal control officer. We have a motion. So moved. Second. And seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as the board is aware that uh, there are certain appointments that require ratification uh, that I make each year. In this case, I'm asking the board to consider ratifying my appointments uh, to the Historical Commission and the Permanent Building Committee. Um, to the Historical Commission, I would like to uh, recommend uh, that uh, Kathleen Black Reynolds be reappointed. Uh, move to accept your recommendation. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. And I would like to recommend a new appointment uh, to replace uh, Bill Campbell, who did a great job while he was on the Historical Commission, but has decided to step down. I'm recommending Diane T. Harvey. Have a motion? So moved. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. I'd like to propose the reappointment to the Permanent Building Committee for three-year terms to expire in 2015, Diane Allen and Paul J. Melorani. We have a motion. So moved. Second. And seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. It's customary at this time, Mr. Chairman, that I announce my appointments to various boards, committees, and commissions and town offices for which the town manager has the authority to make appointments. I would uh, go through this quickly, but... Uh, to one-year term as an animal control officer and animal inspector, Ellen Sawyer. Uh, to a one-year term as building inspector, John Spaulding, and as local inspector, Peter McGee. Uh, to a three-year term on the Carter Lecture Fund Committee, uh, reappointing Ann Berghaus. To a three-year term on the Cemetery Commission, reappointing Judith Simmons. To three-year terms on the Conservation Commission, reappointing Charles Fiore and Vincent Lucchiati. I would also mention that there were two recent appointments that I made to the Conservation Commission. One was Sharon Kelly Perella, 
uh, on January 6th for a term to expire in 2014. And the other was Lisa Johnson on uh, April 2nd for a term to expire in 2013. Uh, on the Elderly Services Commission, I am appointing to a three-year term to expire on 2015, reappointing Mary S. Dion and appointing uh, Gail Regan. Uh, and also to a unexpired term on the Elderly Services Commission uh, to expire in 2014, uh, appointing John Wallace. Uh, as electrical inspector to a one-year term, Frederick uh, Sutter, uh, with uh, Arthur T. Kelly as the alternate gas inspector, a one-year term, Paul J. Rassi with John J. Mydick, Jr. as the uh, alternate uh, to the Board of Health, reappointing for a three-year term, Dr. Jane A. Williams Vale, uh, to the Board of Library Trustees, um, reappointing to a three-year term, uh, Joan S. Grady, and appointing to a new three-year term, uh, Charlotte M. Stewart, who replaces uh, Karen Campbell, who um, worked for many years um, on the, as a member of the Library Trustees and continues to work hard for the Library. Uh, planning Board reappointing for a five-year term, Michael A. Sorrentino. Uh, planning Board appointing to the um, unexpired term of uh, Brian Corrigan, who has uh, recently moved from Wilmington, a term to expire in 2016, J. Christopher Neville. Uh, as plumbing inspector, a one-year term, Paul Raffi, the alternate John J. Midich, Jr. Uh, public weighers, one-year terms, Paul Anderson, Kenneth Heffron, Stephen Stella, and David Chagru. Uh, Recreation Commission, three-year terms, reappointing Sheila Burke and Laurie Robarge. Trustee of Trust Funds, a three-year term, uh, reappointing Michael Morris, Michelle Gomes, and Pamela McKenzie. Uh, veterans agent, a one-year term, uh, reappointing uh, Louis Samaglia, as well as the Veterans Grave Officer reappointing Mr. Samaglia. Water and Sewer Commission, a three-year term, a new appointment, Robert W. Levita. Mr. Levita will um, replace Matt Kane, who decided not to uh, uh, seek reappointment, and also another person who's done a wonderful job for the town, and wiring inspector for a one-year term, Frederick Sutter and Arthur Kelly. And I've sent um, letters to all of those individuals who have left on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, thanking them for their past service. Board is being asked to consider the request of Lisa Ann Troy for a one-day alcohol license uh, for a fundraising dance for St. Thomas Church, which would be held in Villanova Hall on Saturday, September 15th, 2012, from uh, 6 p.m. to midnight. We have a memorandum from uh, Police Chief Bagonis that upon review, the department recommends approval of the uh, alcohol license uh, submitted on behalf of St. Thomas of Villanova Church. Um, <coughs> their recommendation is based on the understanding of the purpose uh, for this event, uh, that being a, um, a fundraiser to uh, uh, purchase room dividers uh, at the church. Do we have a uh, a motion and uh, if we could specify whether or not the board's inclined to waive the fee. Nicholas, so, uh, motion as uh, described by the uh, chairman. Second. Men seconded. Uh, you, you wish to waive the fee. Yes. <coughs> Men seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, board is being asked to Consider the request of Danielle J. Delaney to use the gazebo at Town Common for wedding photographs on Saturday, June 23, 2012, at 4.15 p.m. Uh, we recently received a letter from the Wilmington uh, resident who is getting married at St. Thomas Church uh, earlier on that day. And in between the church service and the reception in Boston, uh, she would like to be able to take pictures uh, at the Common uh, Weather Committee. Um, following the uh, marriage ceremony. We okay with uh, scheduling and? Yes, we are. And, and we would send her this, you know, standard information and uh, advise her that it is a public, public place, but uh, that we could make the gazebo available for her. Questions, comments, or a motion? We move to grant a request and hope she has a wonderful day. 
Can we get together the reception? Did you see where it's at? Second. She's not seeing any room. In second. Anything further? All in favor? Unanimous. The board is being asked to consider a request um, for a neighborhood block party from Jennifer DeFeo. Uh, the party would be located between 19 Liberty Street and 25 Liberty <coughs> Street on Saturday, June 16th from 2 to 11 p.m. Um, and they would uh, uh, request uh, the board's uh, support. If the board decides to support it, we would put the standard um, conditions on uh, such a party. Do we have a motion? So moved. So seconded. Made and seconded. Anything further? All in favor? It's unanimous. Mr. Chairman, that completes the regular business before the board. Public comments. Yes, Mr. Bartman. Uh, Mr. Newhouse, uh, being a member of the Wilmington Minutemen, I'd like to invite the Board of Selectmen to flag retirement ceremonies uh, on Flag Day in June. This is advance notice. And mainly, I'd like to introduce our listening audience and bring your children. And Lou, you know how important it is to retire flags properly. We collect flags in various locations around Wilmington and still have time to get rid of those tatted flags. So with that, I thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Yes, Mr. McDonald. Yes, um, a few things I'll just mention in a moment. I guess you could respond to I just personally think that the people in town that pay taxes have a right to get some answers to some questions and um, especially uh, an expensive item like employee health insurance or employee health costs. Mr. Mr. McDonald, if we, if we could, uh, I know you said you have a number of items. Let me uh, jump in on that one. I with with three, it, but I, it doesn't matter. Uh, in the public comment section, uh, we're more than happy to refer you to folks who can answer those questions. Uh, I know that we've very publicly referred you to Mr. Hull. Uh, to my knowledge, I haven't contacted him, but I did see you speaking in his ear when the when the meeting was going. So again, I'd recommend that if you have questions about insurance, contact Mr. Hull. Well, if you listen to the beginning of my statement, I believe the listening audience has a right to know that. I think the listening Mr. audience Hull too, Mr. McDonald. I think the listening audience. Excuse me. I think the listening audience when it comes to important matters affecting the town, have the right to know what's going to be on the agenda. And that's what we endeavor to do every time a, a chairman puts together a, an agenda with the uh, assistance of the town manager. So we'll yeah. continue to do that. I want it to be in order. So uh, my comments tonight are directly related to agenda items. And since Mr. Hull was uh, on the agenda and he was talking about an employee health insurance plan, um, I thought it would be fitting to find out how much the town paid out for employee um, uh, benefits to, and also how much did Blue Cross pay out. Uh, if Mr. Hull has that information, I think the listening audience um, would benefit from knowing that. Okay. Um, the other we'll, thing, um, the other we'll, thing we'll, we'll, take that, we'll take that question under advisement. Again, I, I encourage you to contact Mr. Hull. And we're happy to uh, have Mr. Hall spend the All time right, answering those sure. questions. Probably at the next meeting, I'll, I'll see if you can make a statement so the audience can uh, understand that and get that information. Um, the other concern I had was um, congratulations on being appointed chairman. Thank you. Um, the one concern I had was there was an individual who brought up um, a couple other boards in town. And he brought that up because each board sued the other board. So what, what, what meeting are you referring to? You, you, you said that a, an individual brought up. I believe it was Mr. Nelson brought up. Oh, a town that, meeting? That, I believe it was at the finance committee meeting that um, I think it was the planning board was in a lawsuit with another board. Okay. Yeah. Then I, again, I, I'd, I'd refer you to oh. the finance committee and the planning board. No, seeing this as is it not as an example hearing. because where you got appointed tonight to the board of selectmen, mm -hmm. and you're also on the high school building committee, what would happen in a case where there was a lawsuit between the board of selectmen and the high school building committee? Would this not be a conflict of interest? <laughs> well, let me, let me answer you. First of all, I wasn't appointed to the Board of Selectmen tonight. Uh, I was elected by 
popular vote uh, a couple of times now, but, but most recently a couple of years ago. Uh, with respect to your question, actually the state laws um, uh, specifically uh, have the Board of Selectmen designate a member of the high school building committee. Uh, there's no conflict, and quite frankly, uh, the question about the uh, Board of Selectmen having to sue the, um, the advisory committee is um, hypothetical, and, and uh, it's a stretch. It's a stretch. But rest assured, there's no conflict there. Okay, well, the last question I had was, um, when Mr. Grant was here tonight, he was also on the agenda. Um, he had brought up um, an issue about hawkers and peddlers, and he, he seemed like he wanted to restrict them or have the board uh, prohibit them from going there. Um, I think it should be pointed out, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the 4th of July committee is actually not a town of Wilmington committee. It's a private entity who possibly, in a sense, is a peddler and a hawker, in a sense. Um, so if I don't know if that would be a conflict of interest, for him asking the board to do that. But I was also kind of concerned if you might be able to give us some information. The profits that are derived from the 4th of July festivities, what does the 4th of July committee do with those funds? Um, and um, is Mr. Garant uh, receiving compensation? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with the, uh, the inner workings of the 4th of July committee. What I can tell you is that the 4th of July committee uh, facilitates fundraising efforts which uh, assist the town in offsetting some of the costs associated with the 4th of July activities. With respect to the first part of your question about hawkers and peddlers, um, and, and again, I'm not an expert on the 4th of July committee, uh, but it's my understanding that they, uh, they provide the uh, framework and they, they provide the space and, and assistance in uh, organizations within the town of Wilmington, nonprofit organizations, doing their fundraising there. So it's within the province of the Board of Selectmen as the, uh, as the board responsible for the issuance of hawkers and peddlers licenses uh, to restrict that permission that we do give to various uh, individuals who are uh, engaged in for-profit enterprise. And, uh, in, in my judgment, the board uh, unanimously made a, a good decision tonight in uh, somewhat restricting those uh, private enterprises uh, from making a profit at the expense of these many community organizations that raise money uh, for the town and that ultimately go back to the to the residents of the community. So it's just a uh, it's it's really just a geographic limitation on what these private for-profit enterprises uh, can do during those activities. Mr. Chair, well, also, I'm also, I am on the board, I'm in the, on the, um, the committee, the 4th of July committee, and I can assure you, Mr. McDonald, nobody takes any, any salary out of any of those positions. We're all volunteer. Um, I just wanted to state my position on that. Um, that well, I don't honestly, Ms. McDonald, um, position regarding the Hawk and Pedal as well, licenses? No, or? no, my position that... <clears throat> I no, no, with regard to what? Before, before I give you the floor at a Board of Selectmen's meeting, to make comment as to the business of a charitable organization that raises money and does work for the town. I don't want to have to interrupt you if I, if you know, I don't want to need, need to interrupt you if I don't have to. But um, if you're asking about hawkers and peddlers, I'd be happy to answer the question. But if you're making an observation or a comment about the Fourth of July committee, I, I'd refer you to them. That's it's terribly unfair of me to allow any comments about them without without their ability to defend themselves. Them. Oh. I just wanted to state my position that I feel as though the taxpayers of Wilmington provide the space to the hawkers and peddlers. I don't believe that the 4th of July committee owns the property. I believe the town of Wilmington owns the property and provides the space, not well, it's, the 4th of July committee it's, providing the It's taken a long time, but we agree on that, Mr. McDonald. You're absolutely right, and that's why the board took a vote uh, to limit the, the hawkers and peddlers. And I, don't, I don't agree with that vote, but go ahead. Okay. Anything else? All right, let's proceed to uh, new business and committee reports. I'll start here. I just want to congratulate you, Mike, on, on the appointment of uh, chairman. I know you're going to do a good job. 
I know you've been fair in the past. I look forward to working with you. I want to make that clear in the entire membership. And I want to put Lou at ease. His concern was the construction of a new high school and the appointment of a town manager. I saw Jeff get a little nervous. Jeff, don't worry. It's a done deal. <laughs> Relax, okay? And the other thing I've got to say, I it's guess in order for me to get a promotion, I'm going to have to do that independently. And if and when that day comes, I guess I'm going to have to run for state rep someday. <laughs> so that's what's going to have to happen. So I just figured I'd make that clear. But I just want to mention that. Thanks. How about mayor? Uh, we're not living in the city alone, right? And I guess they have their own problems with the, the mayor out there now. So and I think the, Mr. Lynch is going to be, my kid, there's an opening, I guess, in Cambridge. <laughs> Jeff, there's an opening in Cambridge. I'm reading that in the Lowell Sun, so. Yeah. <laughs> right, th th thank you for the uh, positive words of uh, encouragement and uh, right back at you. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to reiterate what I said earlier that uh, I thank this board uh, for working with me as a group and uh, it's been an amazing two years of what we've accomplished and um, looking forward to 2013 and uh, good luck. Thank you. Anything down here? Just want to um, say to you, Lou, thank you very much for your service in the midst of that vote. I didn't properly say thank you to you, so uh, certainly did a great job this year and uh, the previous year I wasn't on the board, but um, do want to say thank you for that. Um, Mike, I know that you'll serve the board well in your capacity, and um, I don't have anything further. Thank you. Well, yeah, same stuff. Uh, congratulations, Mike. Thank Looking you. forward to uh, working under, uh, under your leadership, and, and uh, happy to have you on the, in, in the big seat. Uh, Lou, thanks for your service the last couple of years and uh, for your patience, your diligence. Uh, I know it hasn't been easy uh, in many instances, and I think you did uh, yeoman's work, so thanks for all your efforts. Um, I want to also thank all of these appointees. I, I was going to hold up the paper. We, you all heard the names tonight. There was dozens of them, uh, whether they be appointees that uh, we just voted on or that uh, Mr. Kyra appointed. Um, they're all volunteers. They're all people that care uh, and donate their time um, and uh, uh, care about Wilmington. So uh, I just want to thank them for their effort and their service to the town and congratulate them for their appointments tonight. Um, I also want to thank all uh, members of the town who came out at the town election a couple weeks ago. Uh, and thanks, obviously, to those that uh, saw fit to put me here again um, for the next three years. also want to thank all the individuals that came to town meeting a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, it's a, uh, uh, as Mr. Stewart uh, said at the beginning of the meeting, uh, the town moderator, sometimes democracy comes with some pain. Uh, that was no exception to that again this year, but uh, we got the, the, the business of the town done. I also want to congratulate for the last time uh, Chris Neville on his retirement. Uh, we were, a number of us were able to attend his retirement uh, dinner uh, last week and it was a wonderful event. And we send Chris off to a wonderful and fulfilling retirement and already he's on a, uh, on a town board. So uh, we're going to put him to work now that he has some free time. And, it, and additionally, I, was, I had the good fortune and the great honor of representing you um, at the Good Guy Award uh, this weekend. Uh, Mrs. Charlotte Stewart was the recipient of the Good Guy Award this year, and I presented her with the, uh, the, the Selectman's uh, Sterling Bowl. Um, and it was a wonderful uh, evening, uh, well attended. A lot of good fun was had uh, at, at many people's expense. Uh, and uh, uh, again, M Mrs. Stewart is appointed to a board, so it just goes to show you volunteerism, volunteerism reigns, reigns king here in Wilmington. So that is all I have wanted to say. Thank you. Real quick, uh, echo the sentiments. Uh, great job the last couple of years, Lou. And I noticed you got more gray hairs than Obama uh, did in the last three. So, I was born there. <laughs> Important dates. Uh, remind folks if they're interested in participating in the surplus vehicle and equipment auction that the town uh, runs pretty much annually. The um, it is May 17th. The bid opening is at 11 a.m. If they want to uh, get information about the vehicles and the items. Uh, they can go on the website of the Public Works website or they can come to my office and uh, pick up uh, the uh, information. These are sealed bids, so you need to submit a sealed bid if you want to participate. Uh, this is not a, a standing auction, it's a sealed bid. Um, <coughs> on May 20th, the Pan Mass Challenge Kids Bike Ride Carter Lane from uh, 8 to 1 p.m. will be held. On May 28th, the Memorial Day Parade. Um, is kicks off at 10 a.m. with the ceremony at the Wildwood Cemetery expected to be approximately 11 a.m. Town offices are closed on that day, and I would remind um, the members of the Board of Selectmen that they should form up at the Market Basket Plaza at uh, 9.30, 
quarter of ten or so. <laughs> Board of Selectmen's next meeting is uh, May 29th. It's a Tuesday. Uh, just to remind folks, it's a Tuesday because of the Monday holiday. And just advance notice that the fishing derby will be held at Town Beach on June 2nd from 9 a.m. to noon. Uh, the Boy Scout Troop 136 Yard Sale Fundraiser, uh, permission of which was granted by the Board of Selectmen a while back, will be held at the 4th of July parking lot also on June 2nd from 9 to 3 p.m. And uh, we look forward to congratulating the graduates of Wilmington High School who will receive their diploma on Sunday, June 3rd, and those from Shawshank Tech who will receive it on the evening of uh, Thursday, June 7th. I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any second at all in favor? Unanimous.